Hey, look what we have found A big sound in a small town Far away from the bright lights They're making music every night Discover what is all around A big sound, a big sound. A big sound. Listening to Big Sound Small Town with Sandy Carlton. I'm a banjo player from Mooresville, North Carolina, and I'm, my goal is to bring bluegrass music in the 21st century. There you go. That's a, that is a good aspiration. Oh. Well, here's the thing. You know, the music has to stay alive, and I guess I'm, you consider me the younger generation. Yeah. And, and I guess it's, it's my duty to keep it going, and I love the music, so I want to keep it, keep it, keep it rolling. See, I love that in... in young people because uh, we'll take a common north you grew up in North Carolina right you live in North Carolina yep. they have something called beach music people don't learn to shag people don't listen to it it'll die bluegrass though actually is surviving because of people like you you know young people who believe in it and believe that uh, it's their their duty almost so, yeah I think the great thing that bluegrass you can pass it on what's great about it is you don't have to play in a band to, to play bluegrass. You True. don't have to like be a professional. Right. You can just go to jam. You can go to a festival and jam. Sure, you can. You can. Just hang out with your friends and jam. Yeah. And play bluegrass. It doesn't have to be anything serious. That's what Pete it was just telling me through his camps, you know. Mm-hmm. He tells people that jamming is the most important thing probably in all of music because that, that is also, you don't have to be in a band, just like you said. Yeah. But obviously... That's in the, but but obviously you get to play with people, you know. Yeah. So how'd you wind up playing blue, well banjo in Mooresville? So it's a it's a cool story. My grandpa played. He played. Uh, he's from East Tennessee, right? Out in Tennessee. Yeah. And he played banjo for a long time, since probably the seventies, something like that. And I was around six. And prior to this, I never really was a big music person. I never even liked music that right. much. I listened to a little bit of Elvis. Yeah. That was it. Elvis is cool. But my grandpa gave me a little iPod, and he said, you can erase whatever's on there. Just actually told my mom, to just give it to Ed Ray. You can put whatever music he likes. And on it was shucking the corn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flat and scrub shucking yeah. the corn. And once I heard it, I was hooked. I got the, the bluegrass bug. And from that day, I was begging my mom for a banjo for a couple of years. And when I was nine, she finally let my grandma, a grandpa, grandpa loan me a banjo. And it was this old crappy Ada. Sure, yeah. But I, I played that for a couple, a couple months. And then I was going to play at Merle Fest, the Acoustic Kids Showcase. Yeah. And my grandpa had another banjo that was nicer, and he he let me use it for that showcase, and that and he said I could use that one after that. But it, that that's basically my story of start getting started on banjo. But how did you get to Merle Fest? Okay, so I don't, I don't. That was a while back. I don't remember how I got to Merle Fest, but but I mean, I mean, what what? How did they find out to get you there? So. The first month of playing, I'll wake up and early, right before school and practice, and my mom had enough of that because I needed a teacher. Right. The main problem. Sure. So she got me a teacher, and his name was Bill Rippey. You may have not ever heard yeah. of him. Yeah. Uh, no, I actually know who he is. Okay, yeah, because he was, he was kind of, he was, he was very, he didn't go, get out much. Right. But 
he was a great teacher. He's a super good teacher, and he was also a really good banjo player. Yeah, he is. He got, he got asked to play by Jim and Jesse. Yeah. So he taught me for a couple of years, then the COVID hit. And he passed away last year. But where was I? I was, I was taking lessons, and I, I was just practicing, and I learned the wreck of the old 97. Yeah. And I think that's what I played. Oh really? Best thing I sent. Yeah, I sent a video or something like that. Oh, to them, and that's audition. right. And actually, a matter of fact, when, that was when I was in third grade. And for my third grade, his uh, little elementary school project, I did. It was a living history. Everybody chose different people. I actually chose Earl Scruggs for oh, my living that's history. That's fabulous. So I had to the little pages, and I would read. My name is Earl Scruggs, and I grew up in North Carolina. Oh, that, that's cool. You ever been to the Earl Scruggs Center? Yes, a couple times. Yeah. It was a while back, but yeah, yeah. two or three times. Yeah, it's it's really cool. I mean, there's there's some um, – sometimes if you get that way, I'll give you a tour. I, I run this podcast out of there normally. Uh, I'll give you a tour. They have a lot of stuff, a lot of Earl Scruggs stuff that people don't get to see there. Come down sometime, and I'll, I'll – couple of his banjos are in it. It's the last time I went there was kind of when they first started it. Right. But they got they got after he died they they come up with a bunch of stuff that that yeah. people don't get to see. Some handmade um, for Earl banjos that you know pretty cool stuff. Yeah, there's straps stuff. and all kind of stuff. A lot of stuff. A lot of pictures and all. So so did you learn just tons of Earl Scruggs? banjo songs yeah that's for the first two years I played that's all I played was Earl Scruggs and, it was, and then I got into Don Reno sure Don Reno is fabulous and yeah and from there I kind of there was just phases of different banjo players sure and the phases get progressively shorter so now I just listen to a bunch of random people yeah well I mean um, I had Tony Trishka here yesterday oh yeah totally different type of player than Earl sure. but 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 he also can play Earl great also but uh and um then i was just at pete warnick's house who that's hot rise that's um dr banjo he teaches that stuff oh, yeah. and um oh uh, just just bunches bunches of banjo players oh yeah it's it was i guess like a blue and especially with pete's pete's generation sure a bunch of, new banjo players a bunch of good yeah um uh, is this what you're going to do for a living yes that's it is my Aspiration to uh, become a professional. Sure. And I want to not just become a professional bluegrass musician because some some worlds of bluegrass. I can take that out. It's not a big deal. I can edit it. Okay. Yeah. My my goal is to become a not just a professional bluegrass musician, but bring bluegrass to a wider audience. Sure. Yeah. That way, it's more of like. Like the way everybody is listening, to, it's like on the radio. Right. I don't ever hear it. Only radio that I can hear bluegrass on is WNCW. Sure, it's the only one that you can really hear it on yeah. around here, anywhere close around here. Even in more so. Sure. That's the only one I. I, and I that's it's, the only one I. It's can one of the few until you get to maybe Chapel Hill that you can yeah. hear hear bluegrass on on a regular basis. Yeah. I mean, other places have a little bit of it, but yeah. they have. Um, you ever been up to WNCW when they have the going across the mountain? Yeah, I did a radio interview over there. Yeah, a couple, couple months ago. Yeah, I knew that you did. I was just trying to get that, get you to talk about that. Let me. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I went up there to do a radio interview for my CD. Uh, it's Eddie Ray is the name of CD. Right. And um, it's on like Spotify, and sure, Apple Music, and all that stuff. And if, if you if you Follow me on Instagram or Facebook. You can just send me a message, and I I can ship you one. Okay, yes, yeah, that's, that's good because you need to let people know how to get your your stuff. Yeah. And you have both a. Um, well, just go ahead and tell them what what all platforms you're on and how they can find you. They can find you on Facebook. Yeah, uh, on Facebook, Edere Buzzini, and and um, Instagram too. I, I might spell that. I might as well spell that. Yeah, out. you may as well. E T T O R E B U Z Z I N I, which is a different name than you normally hear in bluegrass. Yeah, 
my, my dad is, is Swiss Italian. I, I, I figured that there was Italian in there. I mean, I, your whole name, you know, yeah. it, when I first heard about you, I thought, well, when I heard, I thought you were older than what you are. Oh. You know? Well, the, I mean, I don't know. I don't exactly know how old you are, but you're not very old. I'm 15. 15. But yeah. Recently, a bunch of, a couple of magazines have said I was like 16 or 14. But, <laughs> but I mean, Well, you know, it's... Enough. I heard, I heard, and I thought, well, well, and I didn't even know if you were you, you were American when I found out that you lived. I found out before that you'd lived in more more Mooresville. Then it was like really, you know, which is which is really, really, you know, I did. I, this just wasn't why I thought you were a guy who had come over like the Krugs with the Kruger brothers. You know, the Krugers. I thought maybe you know it's like, okay, this is a forty year old guy that's come to America. Because of your playing style, I mean, you're playing. I've heard it, you know. Oh. And I thought I, I, di- I didn't envision you as a oh. a kid, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, but it came to life for me up since you've been up here, you know. Yeah, it's, this festival has been a lot of fun. Just I, playing with Pete on stage, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Just, just I guess the complex itself is really. It is pretty cool. Pretty yeah. Cool Usually, not a little place, a big place. Yeah, usually bluegrass festivals are, are in a field somewhere. Yeah. And this is uh, definitely an upgrade. I mean, it's a good place. Yeah, it's a good place. I just I just think the camping, I wish it was a little bit oh, more. A, comp- a little more yeah. closer, closer in. Because the camping is like a mile. Sure it is. From, yeah. from they actually had car camping this year. You could, you could mm. come and sleep in your car and camp. Which is, yes, you know, I mean, I played music all my life, and there's a lot of times I've done that, yeah. you know, rather than I didn't have money from motel or something, yeah. yeah. And definitely don't have money for it's just it's, it's five in the morning. Exactly. exactly. Sure. Yeah. It, sure. Yeah. I've actually gone to jobs where I'd sleep. I'd have a day job. Mm-hmm. I'd sleep in my car, and somebody would wake me up when it was time to go to work. So, yeah. so, are you still in school? Yeah, I'm a sophomore. And um, I'm Morrisville High School, so go Blue Devils. Yeah, there you go. Well, you know, I have a, a a fellow I know who's a pedal steel player, and he just graduated from high school. And, and you know, I don't even think he was sure that he was going to graduate from high school before he went out to play music. He is he, he is out playing professionally now, but, um, you know, I guess you're going to finish up. Sorry. I guess you're going to finish going to high school. Yeah, yeah. I I won't drop out or anything. Yeah. But I do plan on straight out of high school. Sure. Going straight into the music business. Sure. I mean, I mean, I I don't I don't blame you for that. It's a lot easier when you're younger too. Yeah. It's um. You have people that you play with regular. Yes, I play in a band, Hot Wax and Splinters. And sometimes play by, as a Eddie Buzzini with like a backup. Right. Band. Just, uh, but it's the band is never the same band. Hey, I, I understand. Is it hard for you to find bluegrass musicians to play with? Well, um, it's not too hard, but a lot of the times they're busy or whatnot, sure. playing somewhere else too. Yeah, I mean, a lot of a lot of good professional uh, pickers come come from around, you know, yeah. Knoxville, Morrisville, sure. that area. Yeah, I mean, there's there's plenty of people you can yeah. find to play with, but probably not a lot of people your age. <laughs> Um, there's a there's a couple of them springing up though. Yeah, they're there. This weekend up here has been great. I had uh, a band, the Wilder Flowers, three girls in here yesterday, yesterday, day before yesterday. They were fantastic players, and they came up through the jam program. You know about the jam programs? Oh yeah. So, I was actually for my middle school project. I was planning on making a, starting a jam program. Yeah, but that was like right when. COVID hit, no. Yeah. The jam program has been really good for the young musicians. In fact, they've been up here all all weekend, and there are some fine young players. How long has this, the try-on one been going on? Because I haven't. This is the second year. Second year? Yeah. Because I didn't, I didn't know about it at all. Yeah. Which is really cool that they have one around this area. It is. And, and how did you actually get yourself on this as an artist? Well, so I met Pete a couple 
a couple of years ago at one of his camps when I was 11, I think. And we kind of, I mean, lost contact after a little bit. I still remember him. He still right. remembered me, but we just didn't ever see each other. And he, I think he got a copy of my CD and he really enjoyed it. And we got back in touch and just hung out a couple times. And a couple of weeks ago, he asked if I could play with him on stage because normally he used to have his wife, yeah. a duet with his wife. Right. But she she uh, she couldn't make it. Right. And he, then he's going to have Tony Trishka play a couple sure. of banjo songs with him. So he asked me to play a banjo because Tony Trishka was rehearsing it. Yeah. But So I got to play a banjo, back him up on a couple of songs and, uh, and a guitar. And That's pretty like, cool. He, um, uh, do you know he was in a plane crash one time? Do you know about yeah, that? He told me that he was in a real bad plane crash and a couple of people died. 143 and, people uh, died. 143? That's crazy. He was one of the lucky ones to survive. And he got out on the runway and it's like the peghead. Yeah. Just laying out on the runway. Yeah. Which is, like which is, yeah, that's crazy. Crazy. It's yeah. Super lucky. And he played a job t- two days later. Played a job with Hot Rods two days later. That's that's crazy. You know about Hot Rods too, don't you? Yeah, no, I mean I'm not I'm not super super up on them, but I mean you know that you know we played in a yeah. pretty progressive bluegrass band. Yeah. I mean they were kind of ahead of their time with bluegrass at the time. Uh, Tim O'Brien. Oh yeah. You know, it was, it, I have listened to uh, some, a few of the songs. some of it. Yeah, it's it's good stuff. That's a, it's. A, He's, he's also a really good songwriter. Yes, he, he is. is. Yes, he is. I noticed because he writes a lot of banjo songs. True, he yeah. Also, his, uh, his vocal songs, I guess, are very good, too. They are. And, you know, his wife sings with him, too. And she's, yeah. she's a good vocalist also. So that's pretty good to get to do that, too. So how many interviews have you done? Well, a bunch because yeah. you're, t- you're starting to turn up everywhere on stuff, you know? I've, I've done, I mean, a couple up in Virginia and stuff yeah. because the label I recorded on, you know, Tom Minty. Yeah. Well, he did, he's, he's the owner of uh, P- Patuxent, and he's, he produced my album. Right. So we, we went up around that area because he knows a lot of the DJs up there. So we yeah. did a couple radio interviews in, like, Charlottesville and that area. And uh, also did one here at WNCW. Right. How, how did you wind up on his label? Uh, Tom? Yeah. So I met him at Galax. Yeah. Which is a course where I met probably sure. most of the people I know. Right. And I, get, I, guess he, I guess I popped up on Facebook for him, and he sent me a friend request. And he wanted me to play banjo with him at a fiddler's convention just in the band yeah. for fun. And I played with him that year, and he... he uh, he asked if I would do a uh, recording with him for his label. Right. And I was kind of, I guess I was kind of hesitant because I didn't really know exactly what I would do. Sure. And I waited a little bit and then I started thinking about it and I started kind of kind of planning out in my yeah. head what it would like, I guess, what it would be like to have an album. And a couple months later, it was in like February 2020. 2022 and I asked him he came down from uh, Maryland to do something and he came to one of the, one of the gig I played at and he, I asked him if I could record an album and we started planning it and I went up in May so, uh, maybe June mm-hmm. a little bit too and I recorded the album and it, it took a lot of uh, there's a lot of stops how would you say a little a lot of Roadblocks. Sure. Made it, and it took a while, a lot more than expected. But yeah. I got it out in December. It, it does take days. longer. I mean, that's one of the things that yeah. people don't really realize. It takes a lot longer to record a project than what people ever believe. So, because I mean, sometimes like one of the files messed up. Sure. And I had to re-record it, stuff like that. Yeah, I just played on a job where uh, somehow a met- you know, a click track was left in. Oh, shoot. Yeah, through through one of the you know one of the recorded parts, 
So basically, that had to be redone, and it was just because someone just forgot to punch it out, you know, at some point. And it was in it. And the thing is, it was buried. The song was complete. You could not hear it. When I when I played, I played harmonica on this record. I never heard any of it. But then when they mastered it, the click, you could hear the yeah. click. So it's like, oh, we got to go back and do this whole thing again. So it ha- I mean, that's, but that oh, stuff yeah. happens. But it happens, you know. And it's really, most of it's just accident. You know, it's not, it's like, I mean, I played on thousands of things and never had a click track turn up like that. But then it turned up in that one, you know. So. But this was, the guy was also playing his <clears throat> um, uh, part through uh, Zoom, oh, wow. which, you know, so it, yeah. and, and it was fouling up that day, so we figured that must have been part of why it was in there. So we were in the studio, but he was in North Wilkesboro, actually, so. Okay, so uh, and w- where do you live? Uh, this was this is a place called Big Feats, which is uh, in Shelby. Okay. The guy has two Grammys out of that studio there, so um, it's a it's a it's a good studio. Um, Do you live around? Here? I, I live in Shelby. Okay, cool. So, which is pretty cool. Yeah. You uh, you take jobs. I mean, I, I get you to come play a place in Shelby. Do you have an agent, do I, or do I just reach out to you if I want you to come play in Shelby to do something? Just reach out to me. Yeah. Okay. I'm not, I'm not big enough yet. To okay. To yeah, well, it'll come. Tr- trust me, it'll come. But, I mean, you, you're you open to playing with um, different people or even yeah. coming and doing a solo thing. Yeah, and I can see <clears> if I can pull together a band. Sure. Bending. All the, also kind of depends on, like, how much, how much you like a venue sure I know yeah I mean everybody's like that you know sure well let me ask you this do you know who Acoustic Syndicate is yes I've I've heard of it okay you need to look those guys up Mm -hmm. they have an incredible banjo player he is uh, Brian McMurray is his name Um, he has taken it to a different place than Tony than than Bela he's got He's pretty cool, and he's in Cleveland County, so or in Shelby, and you need to look that up. Yeah, I will. And when you look him, when you look that up, if you ever want to meet the guy, he's one of the nicest guys in the band, and they've played every. He's played everywhere from um, Farm Aid to Carnegie Hall, you know, and as a banjo player. Well, they're a bluegrass, kind of a bluegrass group, but uh, he, he's just phenomenal. And I can hook you up if you'd ever like to meet him. So. He's he's really I'm, good. I, I need I, I'll look that up for sure. Yeah, do you do it's um it's cool stuff. You'll like it. It's not straight up bluegrass, but you know I think and you're taking it somewhere than straight up bluegrass too. Yeah, I, here's the thing about bluegrass. You know, everybody is is not riding the train. True. And stuff like that, like the old yeah the old uh you know uh. Sure, it's not at the barn. Sure, at the at the hoedown. It's not all flat and scrugs, yeah. Yeah, it's not. Well, it's just not happening anymore. Right. So the music itself can remain the same. You just have to change the lyrics. True. The way people, I guess, of our of my generation. Yeah. That's how you keep it alive. It sure. And enjoy right. the lyrics too, not just the music. True. You like Billy Strings? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I do too. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's a great example of keeping the tradition and keeping the music traditional but moving it along relatable sure. to other people Molly Tuttle yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, um, uh, I interviewed them last year up here and they're all just great old Molly up here last year so uh, yeah that's, that's great stuff yeah, was, what else we need to know um well I forgot what I was going to say. I was going to say something about writing the songs. Do you write? Do you write? Oh, yeah. I write. I've written a couple of songs, and there are also a couple of them are on my, right. my CD. Yeah. That you can check out. The one, I, the first song I wrote was about where the red fern grows. Yeah. That's not on the album. But I, I really love that book. 
And that's actually a lot of the ideas for songs I've written come from books. Yeah. So you read? I used to read a lot more, but I've written. Last thing I. Uh, you see, I've read a lot in my yeah. life, you know. So, and I'm a songwriter, so there you go. Yeah, I've, I just, I've been super busy, so it's kind of hard to read. Sure. Books, but yeah. I, the last thing I read was, I think, Chronicles of Narnia. Or something. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. Like yeah, that. it's a fun book. And. The, the second, maybe not the second, just a couple of songs. When I was 11, I was a very big nerd into these mythology. Kind yeah. Of and there were a lot of these books that I would read about mythology and Norse mythology in yeah. particular at that time. So I wrote this song about Ragnarok, which is the end of the world in Norse mythology. Right. So I... I wrote it. You're in the the character, the POV of uh, the warrior going out to fight the sure. last battle, and he knows nobody because nobody wins. Right. It just everybody kills each other. Right. So he knows it's just the it's he knows destiny. his fate. Right. That's yeah, his destiny, and he yeah. just has to do it to fulfill sure destiny. And I wrote that song when I was 11, and. Actually, I entered it into the the Bobby Martin songwriting contest, yeah. which is at the that's at the Carolina in the Fall Festival, in yeah, Westboro. right. And I was I was very fortunate, and I I won the song, the songwriting contest with that song. So that song really it means a lot to me. I a, guess so. I, I like the song a lot. Yeah, I'm sure. Songs that I've written, so I. I wrote that song on the, and it's on the album. I think that's that might be the first song actually. I can't remember. And another one I wrote was "Cash Don't Sleep" because this is this is also a different song. It's not traditional bluegrass. Thing. Right. I wrote it because I live in a neighborhood that's kind of. It's not just. Uh, it's very diverse. You yeah, you must live in my neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. It's, a lot of the people that live there are immigrants from Mexico. Sure. And a lot of them, most of them come through the cartel. Yeah. Because that's, uh, I mean, that's, that's how they get it. That's, get that's the, get the way to get in. in. Yeah. But the thing about the cartel is it's, it's very, you know, there's a lot of corruption. Sure. And it's very expensive to get. Yes, it is. It's like usually $8,000 and then you're in the control of them. So they can do whatever they want sure. to get money from you. Yeah. And otherwise they just, like, behead you or something. Yeah. But one of my neighbors, they they were, they've, they've been living in the U.S. for a, a while now. But they were going to bring their family over. Because a, a lot of the time it's just... Uh, yes, it the, is. The, the father. Sure. Comes, and then sends money back home. Yeah. But he wanted to bring his family over, his brother and wife... And uh, and son, I think, right. something like that, and they paid to get to the U.S. Right, and then the cartel kidnapped them and held them hostage in a hotel in like in the U.S. in right. Dallas or something like that, and they they were demanding twenty four thousand dollars for to get get, to get him them out get get him out yeah, and so he had to drive down to Texas. And get them out of the, the paid twenty four thousand dollars. That's that's horrible. It is horrible, and it's a it's a it's an issue concerning yeah. a lot of people. Yes. So I decided to write, write that song, and it's about it's kind of it's it's inspired by that. But I mean, now they're all home. Now they're here, well, safe. But I wrote it inspired by that. It's uh, about a guy who's going to go to the U.S. illegally with the cartel. Right. But he, he has to pay back the money, and he ends up just being a slave. And sure. he has to, like, work for the cartel for the yeah. rest of his life. Yeah. And so he kills the leader. Why? Well, yeah. I, uh, I might have just spoiled this. Yeah, story. you might have. <laughs> was, oh, okay. well, leave it at that, because people yeah. want to know. You know, they want to know now. I got to listen to this song. Okay, yeah. And then... And tell, tell them the name of this song again. Cash Don't Sleep. Yeah, right. I think it's the seventh song on the album. Okay. But the the third one, this is I only put three of the songs I wrote on the album. And the third one is I wrote 
because at this point I needed just a good old love song. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, sure. Not even a love song. Just a uh, slow. Yeah. Slow yeah. tempo song. Yeah. And, and a bluegrass one, and it's called I'll, "I'll Try Not to Care," and it's about the guy who goes into like the bar, or the party, whatever, and he sees a girl, but he's I guess he's too nervous. Right. To make to make his move. And sure. Then He's he's just he's sad and sure. angry that he didn't didn't that do he it. Never see her again. Sure. Oh uh, yeah. It's, it's a song like that. Yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. You got jobs coming up. I'm going to be uh, playing at IBMA a couple yeah. of times. You know, I think Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'll be playing at the at the jam stage. Yeah, at the jam stage. Or yeah. Saturday. And I'll be playing at the VA Tourism stage on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then maybe at, and then I'm going to be playing at Jimmy V's, which is like a yeah, restaurant. Yeah, right. On Friday and Saturday. I'm impressed. That's yeah. good. I'll get this out so people can hear that and, yeah. and come. Please do. That way I get some, some spectators. I hear you. No, well, I think you're, I think you got yourself a good path. Uh, we'll see. And I, I wish you nothing but the best. And thank you for coming and doing this. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Appreciate it. So moaning, well, well, well. As you got the power, I'll say yes, indeed. Bring it in. 